Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the System Podcast with new girl Natasha Pinto. We all start somewhere. So if you're starting with System, you've already taken a pretty clever first step. So joining me today on the System Podcast is Maxine Scalen. She is an entrepreneur and the owner of Macro Mixes, the pioneering force in the health food industry. So hello and welcome, Maxine. Hello, thank you so much for having me today. I'm so excited to be here. Such a pleasure. All right. So can you give us, before we get into your baby, your business right now, can you give us a little bit of history? How did you get to where you are today? How did it start? Cool. Thank you so much. So it's actually an interesting story. It's a little bit twofold. I finished studying. I studied um, chemistry and biochemistry at the University of Cape Town. And at that time, I was baking so much. I was also blogging. I have a blog called Sugar Free Sundays, sharing a lot of evidence-based health advice, um, creating recipes with that because I love food and I love, um, well, recipes, but also eating it. And so I had to find a way to kind of marry that with my nutritional goals. Um, and as the blog was growing, people were kind of wanting to buy the food from me or get, get it in some way. And I think a lot of experimentation, a lot of baking related, I was like, okay, cool, we could make, you know, pre-mixes. And so that is how the idea for Macro Mixes came about. So Macro Mixes is, as you said, a health food company. And we make healthy baking pre-mixes, but now we've grown to breakfasts, pantry items, snacks. So it's quite a large range. And um, yeah, it's been a very interesting journey since then. I think that was about three years ago now, but I'd say we only officially relaunched last year in March um, with our, you know, our new compostable packaging, our new website, our new distribution systems, products, everything. So I would kind of say it's been just over a year now of really being in our like version two, which is the two, the version we always wanted. That's fantastic. And how did you find starting like as sort of lockdown hit South Africa as COVID-19 became a reality. What did that do to your business? Did that push you further? Um, yeah, super interesting. So it was quite ironic. We had obviously been building up to this massive relaunch, a website relaunch. It had been weeks and weeks and weeks of all of us just hustling. And then a couple of days before our website was planned to go live, it lockdown literally coincided. It was the same weekend. And so I think it was twofold because one, there were a lot of eyes online. Everyone was watching the news. Everyone was on social media. And so that played to, I think, our benefit because a lot of our marketing had been social, me social media based. Um, so people had their eyes on the screen, you know. But of course, along with that comes the other difficulties of COVID, which are manufacturing kind of things. So that would be raw material procurement, staff not being able to come in, everything you had planned, you now have to completely reshuffle that, you know, that systems, pricing structures, everything. So I would say just twofold. It held us back in some sense because, I mean, yeah, it had me doing things I didn't plan on doing because there were no staff to do it. So I wasn't doing other things I should be doing. But at the same time, we shared the journey on social media. We were super open with our audience, which is something I would really encourage as well. And um, I guess I wouldn't have it any other way because we are where we are today and it's been an awesome ride. That's fantastic. Okay. And then did you always intend to have it so online focused, the business where people can find you online or are you quite intent on putting yourself in brick and mortar businesses, getting into supermarkets? No. So you see, I didn't have much idea when I began what actual retail, like being in supermarkets, what that entailed. Um, but I knew more about online stuff because that was from my blogging background. So that was always comfortable to me. Plus when you don't have large amounts of money to start up with, yeah. you kind of have what's free and so social media was free in the beginning um and like I said it was familiar to me so I put most of my energy there and as I learned I learned more about actually what a big animal retail is how much capital you may have to need um you know the different staff you'd need just to service different areas of having that um stream of revenue in your business and so I'm trying to move us even more online. Um, so right now we have about 50-50, 50% of our sales come from retail, 50% come from online. But this year, our larger project is pretty much digital marketing focused to, I, in my dream world, if we could afford to right now, I'd be primarily online. We have control over the quality of what um, the customers are getting, their whole experience. It's more for us as a business, with us as a brand and a company, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. That makes complete sense. And because it's something that's so much more comfortable to you from the blogging side of things. So 
um, about your blog, so Sugar Free Sundays. You said you started it in university. Um, and what kind of got you into baking? What were you doing that kind of pushed you in that direction? I baked since I was so young with my gran. And then when I was in high school, I actually used to make wedding cakes, like as a side hustle. So I earned money from that. I've always had like a very strong entrepreneurial spirit. If I didn't list some of the businesses, like in Vertigo, <laughs> I've had, I've had a detective agency, I had a magazine, I've sold apple juice, I've busked on my saxophone, <laughs> like it is ridiculous. So um, <clears throat> this was just another venture, you know, wedding cake baking by Max, awesome. Um, and then when I was in university and my passion, I've always exercised and passion about fitness and things like that, but I guess my nutritional knowledge really grew, both because I was studying metabolism and things, but I was doing a lot of my own research and <clears throat> reading up on it because I was so interested in it that I had to find a way to bake things that matched my nutritional requirements at that time for my goals at that time, which were, like I said, quite body composition and fitness focused. Um, and that's, I guess, where the word macro friendly comes from, meaning that it's got the proportions of the macronutrients that you need in order to get a certain body composition. So I was doing that baking. I wanted to share a lot of this stuff because I understood what a struggle it is to not understand nutrition properly. And so you fall for all these stupid diet fads, not understand exercise and just forcing yourself to do things you don't even like, um, not seeing the changes physically that you would want, whether that be just composition wise or even strength wise, or you're just not reaching your goals because we fed so much info that just simply is not helpful. And I was very passionate about sharing that. So I started that in university. Um, and it just grew and grew and grew because I love, I think that as humans, we connect through story. And so by me sharing some of my story, I never had like a big agenda. I just, just like, this is where I'm at and I can share this resource with you because it helped me. And people connected with that. And so a couple of years later, here we are. And like my Sugar Free Sundays fam is my fam. Like if you're listening to this and you're on there, we are besties. And people will sometimes say to me like, I feel like you're my best friend. I'm like, well, why wouldn't we be? What do you need for a friendship? You need mutual respect and love and care. And I'm like, tell me something about yourself. And they'll chat to me. I'm like, oh, well, why are we not good friends then? You know? So it's very cool. That's a brilliant way. And like you connect so well with your audience. I've seen it on your Instagram as well. I've, it's amazing. And I think a lot of people in the industry aspire to that level of, I think, authenticity, but also the fact that you're really giving them value. It's not, you're not just there sharing the same nonsense that everyone else has decided is this is the fad. I've always been so passionate about that, even to my own detriment. I'm such a perfectionist about what I do share, which is interesting because I think my content's not always that perfect and it's very authentic in the moment. But in terms of the information that's shared, I just want to add value all the time. And so sometimes I'll be like, you could just share this. Like, it's enough information. I'm like, no, it's not perfect enough. We need like, <laughs> the, we need different links to different articles, different this in all the situations. So yeah, that's always been a biggie for me because I know how debilitating a lack of quality information can be, you know? And it's people's whole lives you're talking about. How can you tell them something that's not true? Yeah, and they're going to make, it's going to make such a big impact. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My next question is, how do you deal with failure? Because I'm sure as an entrepreneur, when you're starting out, you are going to make mistakes and you're going to do things where you sit and think, I'm going to give up now. I can't carry on. So how do you manage that? Do you know, I see failure as feedback. So if I fail at something, it literally means that I've tried something new or um, I'm attempting to get better. So I really don't mind. I don't take it like personally in a sense I never question my worth when I fail it's literally a part of the journey I actually find it quite exciting I'm like cool this means I'm doing something new this means like I'm, it's almost pointing me in the direction of where I can grow what I can learn and so I take it in my stride and I don't mind it at all to be honest because if you're going to be an entrepreneur dude it's going to happen to you like <laughs> most days so it's, I almost feel like a failure is like a, one of my character traits now like Max is just a failure but you know what I mean it doesn't mean I'm a failure it just means it's such a natural part of the process that I, I look forward to if I'm not failing enough I know that there's something going stale I'm not trying enough I'm not um you know I don't have enough balls in motion so yeah, I actually really like it <laughs> it's a good it's a good way to put a positive spin on something that is like debilitating I know it could be no. use the line failure is feedback failure is How feedback Back for what you are trying to do it doesn't literally you have to get you have to fail that's the only way you learn I agree with you um is there a, is there a time recently where you feel like failure was 
on the brink and you how did you manage like a particular situation because I think specifics kind of get people going you could talk about last week the end of the week if you like <laughs> do you know I wouldn't even call it a failure because <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. No, I'm no, joking. Um, I texted anyone last week because it's extremely stressful. So, as a lot of people may know, at the time of recording this podcast, we are in quite a strong COVID wave, yet another one. And so, that impacts, as we spoke about earlier, all areas of the business, impacts what staff can come in. Also, there's often very last minute warning about these kind of things because if someone was exposed last night, you know, they can't come in. We can't be risking um, staff health. And on top of that, we can't be risking customer health. You know, we, we do deal with food. Um, so I take that extremely seriously. Our protocol is extremely serious. And just the, yeah, the, the packaging and raw material supply chains, the way that affects things and transport. I mean, today couriers aren't working and people, like it's literally just too much. So I wouldn't even call that failure. I'm just going to say that's why last week was quite stressful. But if I think of a particular failure example, um, okay, it's just something small. I mean, I don't want to get too deep or whatever. <laughs> no. But like, so we decided to launch a like bundle online and we learn every single time we do a new online launch of a different kind of product or um, a group of products, like a bundle, how to do that more effectively. And we end up having postmortems every time to make sure we improve because it affects everyone on the team. You know, if stuff isn't planned properly, it becomes very stressful for like the distribution team. But we run out of stuff somewhere along the way. Like there are so many moving parts that you can never imagine until yeah. you're inside. So I would say failure was the first one that we did. I often am very idea focused. I just want to go for it. I don't care how we get there. We can take shortcuts, but not in terms of quality. I mean, in terms of like, I'm vision. I'm like three weeks ahead all the time. And if you give me like an Excel doc or like a, a list or something, I literally hyperventilate and I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> I need the end picture. So anyway, you can naturally imagine that until I have proper project management coming from people other than me, uh, there's quite a lot of failure there. And so I guess after that experience, I saw how stressful it was on so many members of the team. We weren't able to deliver the bundle on time to certain people. So it was, you know, a failure for some of the customers. And that was a failure on my part in terms of planning, leadership. Um, I, obviously, I can't predict the future. I didn't know a lot of those mistakes would come up, but it was such a helpful experience because we all had a chat afterwards. Everyone shared how they felt. They thought what worked, what didn't work. And the one we went on to do afterwards has been fantastic. I mean, we launched a new product yesterday and today's the live launch. Strawberry Nougat. It is so it's good. Delicious. And our are smoother than anything because they are, they are planned so far in advance to the T. And it's just a beautiful, I mean, we are recording a podcast right now. I'm not rushing around doing something else. Perfect. So if I can tell you that that failure taught us all a lot, then I don't know what it does. That's brilliant. It's okay. And then you spoke about um, your packaging, which is now all sustainable, right? It's compostable. Mm -hmm. So why did you decide to kind of branch your products into that industry? Because I know there's like 400 million tons of plastic that are produced globally every year. And like 9% of that is recycled. Yeah, no, it's crazy. I think when we knew we were going to relaunch and we were just going balls to walls, I wanted everything to be fantastic. Otherwise, why are we bothering? We need the best online, like we need the best media, the best website, the best product in terms of like the ingredients we're using. And that it had to go with the best packaging that we could do. And if we are making a product that we say helps people with longevity and a sustainable, satisfying, healthy lifestyle, then how are we not going to incorporate that in our packaging in the sense that it is also sustainable and like benefiting the health of the earth that just seems like super counterintuitive and doesn't align with our values, which are like integrity, you know? Um, and so there have been 1 million obstacles. I don't even know if I would recommend this. We had, oh my gosh, this is another failure. Towards the end of last year, a whole batch of compostable bags Literally, they would just break and tear. It was a bad batch. And there's only one or two suppliers in the whole country that actually make these. Um, and so it was already when they were in shops, in people's homes, splitting, splitting, the amount of product that we had to replace, just the whole thing was a dog show. So it hasn't been easy. But I just think in terms of knowing what, how we had to do it, if we were going to grow, I'd rather grow slower in a way that feels right than speed things along and... You know, there's a little value, just not an alignment. Yeah, and this isn't like a shortcut that you're willing to take. It's it aligns with your values, and I agree. It's it's a beautiful promise for your customers as well, because by purchasing their product, your products, they're not just supporting you; they're supporting the planet. Okay, 
And then my next question is, you know, and also, on that, sorry. No, go. No, no, no. Oh. No, I was going to say that while a lot of it is compostable, we have now had to shift to some of it just being recyclable because the systems in this country actually don't support compostable things that much. And so unless you are home composting, um, a lot of people were rather, were not even recycling, they were just throwing in the trash. And yes, when it eventually gets through the black bag in the landfill, it won't stay there forever. Amazing. But we have had to relook at that. And so if anyone who owns a business, there's no pressure to go compostable because actually in this country at the moment, I would say that our infrastructure is not set up to support that. I would say recyclable is fair. Yeah, recyclable is a better like short term option. And then um, what does your future look like? So like what are, what's your short term goals for your business? I know you've just launched a product and the live launch is today. And then your medium term goals and then a long term goal for where you see this going. Sure, we have a full whiteboard of these. I wish I could pull it up right now. We actually had our little mission, short-term goal, like short-term mission planning meeting a couple of weeks ago. And everyone just says like what they would want to achieve and all those kind of things. I think medium term, well, let me start with long term. We want to be the industry leaders of high protein, healthy food in this country. And that means that we need lots of innovation and we need to move relatively quickly because if you don't have the amount of money or resources, that a larger company who can just swoop in and kind of just duplicate everything you've done on a grander, cheaper, quicker scale, um, then you are going to fall behind. And that's a huge stress and not something we actually have that much control over, but that would be the long-term goal. And um, in terms of more medium-term goals, it's just growing our product range to tick the boxes of all different needs. So we have a lot of sweet food. I want that kind of savory pre-makes, that kind of thing, so that it's kind of most meals are taken care of, apart from obviously like, you're not going to branch into literal like chicken and rice dinners. Um, I just, you know, sweet, savory, breakfast, lunch, snack, like all those things are, are ticked. And just really streamline the online experience even further. So it is pretty streamlined, but we're going to relaunch our website in the next couple of months because already it needs a revamp. I'm like, how, oh, dudes, we just did it. But time flies when you're looking at other things. And next thing I'm like, cool, this could be better. Um, also growing our retail a little bit, because like I said, while that's not where I would want to be in the long term, you sometimes you have to take steps just to uh, keep the ball moving in the short term so that you can get to a long term goal. Yeah. Um, so growing our retail for print a little bit. Our digital marketing, like I said, is going to grow even further. So we'll be investing more budget in that because on that note, it's not all organic. Actually, you pay for the audience size that you get. And so it's about growing the, the orders will increase and they already have been, like we've been evaluating how well it's been doing, but then we also have to, um, so I'm speaking so much now, I'm just filling in on some of the goals. We have to make sure that we are scaling on our side appropriately to fulfill that need. And so let's say the online orders grow by 20% a month, eventually that is a bigger storeroom, more packers, more couriers, more people doing all these things on our side, our distribution side. So it's just that we can scale that both at the same rate, you know, kind of up, 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 up. Um, and the last one, oh, we have a whole new product range launching. Sorry, how did I not mention that? <laughs> it's scheduled to launch for August on my birthday, the 23rd. If anyone's listening, I do like normal cake. You can send me one. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I don't think we will have it launched, to be honest. And that's okay, because I put all of our mental health and stress levels above a tight launch date. And I think we're looking more at like November. Plus, I would want to have an in-person launch for it. And with COVID, it just doesn't look like we're going to be having many in-person launches in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, that's a whole new range of products we've never done before. It's fulfilling, I think, a need and a gap in the market. I'm so excited about it. And uh, yeah, you know, just making health holistic and evidence-based at the same time. That's fantastic. Do you think you would ever branch out internationally and make your products available everywhere? Sure. That's actually stuff that we're busy researching right now. So we're busy um, researching the UK um, in talks with a company that kind of gets your product there, getting all the certification rights. So that's like already happening. Amazing. But I don't, know that, I don't know that we would personally handle it in terms of like, I'm actually there, like going to different stores and stuff. We would do it through like some kind of third party um, because right now it's not that affordable and that's really what it comes down to. What is the consumer in that country going to have to pay for after all the duties, after all the transport? Um, yeah, so it's really a numbers game at the end of the day, but that's definitely on our radar and stuff we're working on right now. 
Yeah, that's a, an important consideration. All right. And then you had a podcast um, that you used to post to, but I know currently your your baby is where you're putting all your focus. So what was your podcast all about? Maxi Chats, evidence-based health radio. Yo, I love Maxi Chats. The podcast, is, I still pay a monthly subscription fee to keep those podcasts on lips and y'all. So you can go listen to them. Um, when I was doing more blogging and more active on Sugar Free Sundays, I'm still very active on Sugar Free Sundays, but in terms of, as I'm sure you now know, like podcasts, for example, takes a lot of time, resource, you know, you need to edit, you need to plan, you need to get the stuff in and at the moment. I mean, it's just completely unrealistic to think that I'm going to have time to do that. Um, but I'm keeping in there, I'm keeping it on ice because I will be back season three, mm -hmm. but we have two seasons amazing guests my favorite scientists psychologists everyone kind of providing they're the experts in their field and they will be providing um it'll be information on stuff that is mostly applicable to kind of my audience's lives you know anxiety eating well how to train better so i find that it's a really nice balance between not being too basic but also steers away from being those like long form extremely detailed podcasts that are like two hours long and you have to be super niche into that to really even know it's cracking yeah so yeah awesome. So like a bite-sized taste oh that's brilliant yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> all right so um in kind of closing um did you when you were getting into the business side of things read any business books and kind of like self-educate yourself so that you could get through this all ah, I think I had. <laughs> <laughs> no you know what I actually currently have like two business books I'm reading right now so um but I have also been reading them for six months if that's any um <laughs> but I and I do want to share some resources here that have really helped me though okay Please so do. what I found more helpful than a book if you are an entrepreneur you'll know that your time for actually reading things is super minimal yeah. so maybe what's more a podcast because you probably have to drive somewhere um and so the podcast well, social media marketing, I really love them. They've got like 400 episodes on everything you'd ever do, building Facebook ad funnels. Because when you're starting, especially small business, you're not going to be able to hire an agency to do that stuff for you. You're going to have to learn to do a lot of stuff yourself, yeah. which is awesome. And you know what I also think, sorry, a lot of business books and stuff are not necessarily that helpful for now because while the principles are great, you, your journey is going to be so, so unique and so, especially with technology developing like it is, you can have a lot of challenges that you're actually just going to have to learn on the spot and so rather equipping yourself with more general knowledge of like how to learn things quickly basic business principles that can actually like you can apply to any situation so yeah that one business made simple they actually have an online course you you think i'm getting commissioned for this i should be um <laughs> the way i tell everyone about it because it has it really has helped me i haven't done the course but it's called business made simple university um it is they quote more helpful than an mba that's what people have said i haven't done it so i can't vouch but their podcast has helped me so much i bought his book and it's actually nice bite size you know how you read like a daily devotional but it's like that for poor business it's so like one thing to work on a day which i just think is so achievable when you get this whole book sometimes you're just like you get stuck on page three because you realize like that already applies to you, those problems. You never even make it to chapter four because you're like, hang on, I need to fix like whatever they're talking about on page three. And then you never move forward because it takes you like four months. So I, I think that the concept of these bite-sized like pages is super helpful. So in summary, it was um, social media marketing, business made simple. I think it's another one called The Startup. But yeah, I love podcasts and I've really found that very helpful. That's excellent. And then um, is it like a piece of advice that you would give yourself to Maxine, who is just starting out, just started Sugar Free Sundays? What would you say? Don't do it, joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, something I would say is that there really is no race. And so you need to stop and just breathe because all you really have is your health and the people around you and things feel you know pressured and like a race or like you've got to be somewhere at a certain time but you don't and if you sacrifice those things um in order to try and get somewhere faster you're literally getting to the grave faster like there is no need so don't compete with anyone and you don't even compete with yourself because i'm not actually competitive with other people i just am very intrinsically motivated and just want to get there i hate wasting time honestly like, I don't even like to take like 15 minutes to unpack my groceries. I'm like, this is such a waste of time. I could be doing something else. So just really to become okay with just being in the moment, breathing and not risking that at the expense of getting somewhere faster. 
Okay, that's excellent advice. And then uh, what is your favorite healthy on the go snack? My favorite, okay, well, I just, I'm busy eating popcorn right now. So I would maybe have to say popcorn. I've been eating bags and bags of this stuff lately. <laughs> Love popcorn. No, my healthy on the go snacks. Come on, Shrini, I've got TikToks and Instagrams about this. Loads. <laughs> I'm a snacker. Okay, so apart from our macro mixes, which I'm not even trying to punt, I'm just being dead honest, make up like 60% of my whole diet. <laughs> like a box of meat bar a day. I eat, like today I had birthday cake, a mug cake for breakfast. So I just put the pre-mix in a mug in the microwave for 60 seconds and I have like a cake. That's awesome. Um, that's on the go. Our mug muffins that you actually can get in a mug. But apart from that, I eat a lot of biltong, popcorn, tomatoes, carrots. Um, yeah, just lots of foods that I can eat a lot of. <laughs> Excellent. And then uh, where can our listeners find you? Can you give us your social media tags and your website and I'll pop them in the comments. Sure. So if you just want some messy, spicy life, Sugar Free Sundays is your spot. Just head straight to stories. I'm probably showing you what's going on. I'm probably a hot mess. It's always fun. Um, that's on Instagram. I have TikTok as well. I know, very new age, only about three months old, but I love it. Actually, can I give that advice, please? If anyone's yes. listening, if you have a business, I think that you should really start your TikTok profile um, and just get going. Don't, I know it seems confusing, overwhelming. Don't be a perfectionist. Just start. I made myself a goal. I was like three videos a day. It's growing really well. I find it super rewarding. Less pressure than Instagram because it's not this um, pressure to have like beautiful, such curated content. It's very like real in the moment. Love it. And in a couple years time, I think that in, well, Instagram is, if they don't change, which I know they want to, but TikTok is going to take over. So I think it's a great place to share your business's message and story and really invite your customers in to go on that story with you. Um, anyway, sorry, that's a side note. So Sugar Bee Sundays on Instagram and TikTok. And of course, there's a website as well, sugarbeesundays.co.com. And then Macro Mixes, we are on Instagram. We are also on TikTok and our website, which is www.macromixes.co.za. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Maxine, uh, for giving me your time. And thanks to our listeners today. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that five-star rating, subscribe to the channel. And if you're listening to us on a podcast app, subscribe to our podcast. You never miss an episode. System is a digital marketing software platform packed with all the tools you need to grow your online business. Thank you so much. That was brilliant. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Such a pleasure.